About an hour and 45 minutes away from opening face-off as Alex Ovechkin and the Washington Capitals take on the Tampa Bay Lightning right here on Comcast Sportsnet. Welcome back to Washington Post Live here from the concourse at Verizon Center with Ivan Carter from the Washington Post. And we are pleased to be joined by Dmitry Chesnikov, who covers the Capitals and specifically maybe Alex and all the Russian players for Sovetsky Sports, the, uh, the largest sports newspaper in Russia. And before we start talking about Alex, before we talk about the Capitals, congratulations are in order. About two weeks ago, Dmitry became a U.S. citizen, so congratulations. Thank you, Russ. And uh, now let's start talking about the team. How much fun has it been to cover Alex and these guys? It's been a handful, you know, especially after Viktor Kozlov signed and after the deadline when Fedorov, one of the most, you know, the best guys, best Russian guys to ever play in the NHL, when he came over, it's a handful. It's, it's really, you know, taking time, going around uh, the locker room, trying to talk to those guys, get their opinion. And what they do on the ice is just amazing. Yeah, a lot of people may not know this, but Dmitry also acts as an interpreter a lot of times for some of the Russian players so that we in the, in the American press who don't speak Russian can understand what he's saying. So you, part of this is you become friends with these guys, but you're also covering them for, for their, you know, hometown newspaper, so to speak. How do you differentiate between, you know, staying on the outside and being on the inside? It's just common sense, really. You know, uh, sometimes you talk to players or, you know, even your friends, um, and you hear things, but you just don't talk about it. You don't write about these things, you know? Well, first of all, congratulations. I bet you never thought you'd come to Washington to talk hockey with a brother named Ivan. So congrats on that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. But, uh, I wanted to talk to you about, you know, the, the evolution of Russian hockey. Because to Americans, the, the pinpoint for Russian hockey is always the 1980 Olympics. And probably it's not a fun topic over there but the, the upset, the miracle on ice. And from that time, we've seen this wave of great uh, Russian players come over. Is that something that is still talked about over there a in terms of the other side? Do they bring it up, or is it kind of something you don't bring up? Not really. <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, we do talk about the other wins that we had, and uh, we mostly talk about the 1972 series, the first series when the Soviet players uh, played the NHL players, professionals, for the first time. And when they came over, and uh, it was a big deal. It still is a big deal. Nice. 1980 nice. has been erased from the memories. They just, they just shove it under the carpet. Uh, trying to, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm reminded a lot about there it here, go. though. There you go. <laughs> you mentioned Fedorov, maybe the greatest Russian player to come over here and play in the NHL. Alex Ovechkin is on that path to becoming maybe the greatest. What What is Alex like celebrity-wise back home? Oh, the, he's such an enigma. I mean, he moved here. He's starting scoring a lot of goals. He's the bona fide uh, star of the NHL. Mm -hmm. You know, people want to hear, uh, want to follow him, and uh, you know, people want to follow the Washington Capitals. It's like a Russian team now. Wow. You know, we got four Russians there. People, you know, uh, we got so many clicks on our website uh, when, when, uh, when we run the story on the Caps. He he is a star over there. And what about when he goes home? When he goes home, is he mobbed like, a, like we see celebrities in Hollywood are mobbed, or is it different? I think he's recognized. I don't know if he's mobbed. I bet a lot of kids are in awe. Like, oh, is this, is this real? Is this really Alex? So, so if, we, if, you, if we went to Moscow and walking down the street, would we see an Ovechkin uh, Capitals jersey occasionally? I mean, is it like that? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Now it is like that. You, know, cool. you can see jerseys, Caps jerseys sold in the street now. Wow. All right, I got to ask you about a story that I believe came out, maybe in your paper, and maybe not, about Alex and Evgeny Malkin's agent getting into some sort of fight at a bar somewhere? Is no, this, is this, what, yeah, what? it wasn't in our paper. Okay. But um, from what I heard, we called Alex to get a comment. He said, well, it didn't happen. So okay. we decided not to run it, you know, since one of the sources confirmed it didn't happen. And then, if you notice, it kind of died down. So Yeah, the only reason why I bring it up is because Malkin obviously has been tied to Ovechkin this year because they've been battling it out for the overall points lead in the NHL. They're countrymen. They're close to the same age. Is there a rivalry there? Oh, there is a rivalry. First of all, you know, the agent, Malkin's agent, the Russian agent, was Ovi's agent as well in Russia. You know, so... Uh, but not anymore. They, not anymore. But they know each other. They still talk. They're not friends. But uh, they know each other. They have good relationship. As far as uh, competitiveness, well, you, you saw it on the ice. Oh, yeah. Uh, twice now. The last two games when the Cavs played the Pens, the hits. You know, and Alex said, you know, I don't have any friends on the ice. It's all fair game. Right. And, and Malkin probably feels the same way, considering the way they go at each other. We could be seeing, if things fall right, a first round between the Caps and Penguins. I imagine that would play pretty big in Moscow. Let me tell you this. Uh, last time I spoke to Malkin, I asked him about the friendship. You know, after the uh, hit, Alex laid on Malkin, and he said, well, you know, we'll say hi and bye, but we're not mm -hmm. friends. So, did they, used to, did they used to have a bigger friendship? Mm-hmm. 
I don't think so. They re they only played in the junior level in the national team, mm -hmm. but they played in for two separate professional clubs so far away from each other. So, and one of the things I think we have a hard time grasping is you know th there's the Russian league that that Alex played in before he he came over here, and 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 how is the NHL viewed over in Russia? Like, it, it, where does it fall? Like, do you get front page, you know, headlines in, in Moscow? Just Alex this year. I think he made four front page news. You that's know? A, yeah, that's huge. It, it is huge. It is huge. Uh, I think the first live uh, Stanley Cup finals we saw in Russia in 1993. And now people try to follow it. Uh, it's, it's on cable. A lot of games are televised live. And I'm sure if the Cavs make the playoffs, the following is only going to grow. What I'm real curious about is, and I read an article recently, we know a lot about the, the oil money that's in Russia and a lot of they're pumping it into sports. Could there come a day where the Russian teams have so much money that they can start buying some of these guys back and maybe have their own Super League in Russia? I would imagine a guy like Alex Ovechkin would be a huge popular player playing in his own city. Do you ever see that day coming? It might. Not in the near future, though, because the first priority right now for the Russian national team, for the Russian Hockey Federation, is, is to bring hockey back to life. Because after the fall of the Soviet Union, it's been in the, in the decline, and uh, the so-called Super Series uh, of last summer, when the Canadian junior team played our team and swept us, uh, showed what kind of problems we have. So eventually, eventually, uh, it might happen. But next year, we're going to uh, Russia is going to start a new league, uh, NHL type. They brought in people like Bob Goodnow and uh, Scotty Bowman, Igor Larionov as consultants mm -hmm. to tell them how we're going to run this league. You know, how how should we do this from a business perspective? Uh, so interesting. So yeah. we're going to drive up prices for players potentially. I mean, if they got into a bidding war for, for players between the NHL and the Russian league, it would be a very, very interesting situation. It's already competitive. Yeah, or we could see maybe one of the uh, Russian, Russian oil tycoons like Abramov with, with Chelsea come over to the NHL and maybe try to buy it. Uh, you never know. They <laughs> might. <laughs> yeah, they could. Dmitry Chesnikov, he writes for uh, Sovetsky Sports. It's the largest Russian sports newspaper and uh, covers the caps and maybe specifically now the Russians on the capitals here in Washington, D.C. Congratulations once again on becoming a citizen of the United Thank States. You, and uh, I'm sure you look forward to voting in the upcoming election. Although we, we don't get into personal politics. On Obama. The show. No. So, hey, Obama. hey, hey, come on. We don't do so you said you can. Not My opinions can be expressed, All right. but they're Expr not like the Washington Post. Yes, the, the disclaimer is at the, the top disclaimer of the show. The disclaimer is at the top of the show. That's <laughs> what we do. Okay, we're coming back with a guy who is also paid to express his opinions, the lead analyst. And there he is showing off his, uh, his mullet. And he had one back in the day. Craig Lachlan, former cap, now with Comcast Sports, joining us on set. Locker's coming when we come back on Washington Post Live.